try it in section 2.4. We're on bottom of page 60 here, and we're talking about analytic consequence, uh, this rule. So it's going to give us some practice in trying that. So first things first, we opened the Anacom 1 file in Fitch, and we see right here, you got nine premises and six conclusions right here. It starts us up at the top there. Um, so we're going to go through a few rules here. Second part of this, you try it. Position the focus slider, it's this thing, at the first conclusion following the Fitch bar. So I'm just going to use my keys and go down like that. You see the arrow going down. There's the first conclusion. All right. So they have invoked the rule Anacon, analytic consequence, uh, but haven't cited anything. Remember, we always have to cite something, or we usually have to cite something. And this conclusion, C is in the same shape as B, that follows from two things. First thing is B is a cube, right? And also C is a cube. So if C is a cube and B is a cube, then it's an analytic consequence that C is the same shape as B. They're both cubes. All right, so let's see if this checks out. We're going to go up here, check the step. Yeah, checks out. Green arrow. All right, easy enough. Then number three, now to move the focus slider to the step containing B is in the same row as A, the next one down. It says, since the relation of being the same row is symmetric and transitive, this follows from B is in the same row as C, right? So let's see, B is in the same row as C, that's number two. And A is in the same row as C, next one down. A is in the same row as C. All right, because if B is in the same row as C, and A is in the same row as C, then B is in the same row as A. Right, okay, so let's check this step two, and we got it. All right, good. So the third conclusion, down here on page 61 now, third conclusion, E is in back of C, follows from three of the premises up here, and it wants us to see if we can find them. All right, so if E is in the back of C, what we want to take a look at is relation predicates that have to do with back of or front of or same row or something like that, location predicates. All right, so if um, D is large, we really don't care about that, or if it's medium or a cube, those are shape and size predicates. So we want to narrow down what we're looking at uh, as far as location goes, all right? So what I want to take a look at is E and C. So let's say this might be relevant, B and C, right? Because we're dealing with E and C. And E and D, all right, so we're getting closer. So one thing that you might want to do is just have a pen and paper ready and make a little Tarski's world yourself or you can even do it in Tarski's world if you want. Might be a little faster with pen and paper, but write down a world and just visualize, if you're a visual thinker, um, what the relationships are. All right, so we're saying that B is in the same row as C and E is in the same row as D and this is a consequence, analytic consequence from these two and one other and I'm thinking it's this one, all right? So if B is in front of D, right? And then B is in the same row as C, and E is in the same row as D, then E has got to be in back of C, given the relationships up here. So let's see if we're right. Yep, that checks out too. Okay, so we've done the fourth step here. Now, Number five, fill in the citations needed to make the fourth and fifth conclusions check out. All right, so let's go down to 13. This is another conclusion. D is the same size as A. All right, and we go back up and see what's relevant. We have a same size here, and we have the same things we're talking about. So if A, here's a premise, if A is the same size as D, then D has got to be the same size as A, right? So let's take a look. We're going to go down to the consequence rules. We're looking at analytic consequence here. And let's see if we're right. Oh, we got a site. I forgot to cite. Number nine. That's what we're looking at. Let's see if that's right. And it is. Good. Okay. So number 14, this is another conclusion. So what is this an analytic consequence of? All right, so remember, we're dealing with size predicates now, larger, A and C. All right, so let's see what's relevant up here. Um, let's see. C is medium, and that's a size predicate. Right, and let's see what else. Um, okay, D is large. Let's see, A and C. D is large, and then A, D. Okay, so let's see, A and C, we have a relation here, and D. So let's see, 
Let's try this. If D is large and C is medium and A is the same size as D, then D, sorry, A is large because D is, they're the same size, right? And they're gonna be, so A has got to be larger than C and that's what it says down here. So let's see if we're right. We cited those parentheses. We're gonna do an analytic consequence and check our step. Yep, that checks out. All right, now we've got our last conclusion here. Okay, B is in the same column as B. Now, this says, number six here, final conclusion does not require that any premises be cited in support. It's simply an analytic truth, virtue, true in virtue of its meaning. Okay, so we don't even need to cite anything. We know that just from what same column means that B is obviously in the same column as itself. So let's just do analytic consequence and check the step. Yep, we got it. All right, when you're done, choose verify proof to see that all goals check out. Yep, that checks out. And now we're done. Save your work as proof, Anacon 1, and now we've finished the second U-Triad of 2.4.